We live in a world where even a humble tool like a pocket knife can be a status symbol. And when cost is no object, these are some of the best luxury knives that you can get. So when we think of high-end luxury knives, one of the first brands that comes to mind is Rockstead. And for good reason. Here is one of their models right here. This is the Higo 2, and it is just roundly impressive in its engineering and execution. We've got titanium handles here, nice and fluted, very fine cutout for the lock bar, super tight tolerances all around, very cool, very distinctive blade, three and a half inches, ZDP 189, very high performance steel, but right here. This is the claim to fame for Rockstead in general, and that's these edges. They are something you can't really find that I'm aware of anywhere else in a production knife, and it is convexed right down to the edge. There's no secondary bevel, and it has a mirror polish. And the precision required to do something like this is truly astounding, especially on a steel like ZDP 189 that is not easy to, uh, to manufacture with. It's not easy to bring up to that mirror polish. It'd be very easy for the edge itself to have little ripples in it, little waves slightly off as it goes slightly off center because when you're convexing right down to zero, any little mistake and you're asymmetrical, you're pushed over to the other side and yet they do it. That's, that's true even without the mirror polish but when you add the mirror polish onto it, it's truly impressive. Look at that edge profile. It is perfect. Absolutely stunning. And every single Rockstead I have ever held has always pulled that off. It is truly, truly impressive and something you just got to see to be able to truly appreciate. Hopefully we get a little bit of that cross here in across here in the video. Just absolutely astounding. So while a brand like Rockstead impresses with its technical prowess, a brand like William Henry kind of embodies the art knife aesthetic. And that's something like this knife right here, this Monarch folder that is festooned with all kinds of high-end materials that all work together into a cohesive whole. Does a basic pocket knife need to look this good? No, absolutely not. But how cool is it that something like this exists to appreciate? The blade is a little over two and a half inches long. It's got a great shape for subtle everyday use. The blade and handle are both made from handmade Damascus uh, from two different uh, Damascus makers here in the United States. The blade is a Norris Damascus, looks very cool, and the handle is a Chad Nichols Damascus, both highly respected names in this trade coming together for a cool element right here. Speaking of cool elements, Mammoth Tusk Inlay. How excellent is that? Even the smallest details on this knife get extra special treatment. Check out the thumb stud and the button lock right there. Both machined, almost gemstone-like quality surrounding a spinel gemstone in each. Just truly, truly exceptional. And it's gonna be a great everyday pocket knife as well. It's still going to do those day-to-day -day things you need. Kind of following a similar vein to William Henry is the Santa Fe Stoneworks models. This is the Tesoro. Has a blade just under three inches, so it's a little bit larger than the William Henry, and it actually offers even higher performance because we have a damascus steel blade here, which looks like other Damascus blades out there can look, but instead of being layers of metal folded together, damascus steel is created on a powder metallurgy process. So kind of built up from a molecular scale to achieve this result rather than that hand folding method. As a result, because of the particular metallurgy or the particular makeup of the powder metal used here, you're gonna get more edge retention than most traditional Damascus blades. And it still looks awesome. The handles are stainless steel with integral bolsters. We've got mother of pearl inlays front and back and that button lock as well. This isn't kind of a modern like free flipping button lock. As you can see, it's not gonna do that number. It is more refined, more tasteful in a way than any of those, those style of knives can ever be. 
So one person who's kind of considered one of the forefathers of the art knife genre is Michael Walker. And while most of his stuff is only available as customs nowadays, you can get one of his few collaborations with CRKT. This is the Monument, and it channels the spirit of his custom knives and his high-end art knives into something that is more available. And this is a truly, truly stunning knife. This is actually made by Lion Steel in Italy for CRKT, and like many of the uh, Italian knife manufacturers, the things made there just feel a little bit extra special, a little bit more daily luxury than other countries seem to be able to provide, or at least their own flavor, their own personality of everyday luxury. The blade here is just over three inches long with Damasteel material, so again, excellent, excellent performance. And they've carried that, not for performance, but for the look, to the pivots as well. Those are Damasteel pivots, as you can see. The handles themselves are titanium. We've got sculpted texturing front and back for an almost jewel-like quality there. Milled pocket clip with a wheel for the retention point, which feels extra nice going in and out of the pocket. Inset liner lock on this knife, keeping things a little classier. Excellent profile close. I mean, just the shape in the closed position is beautiful, to say nothing of when you flip it open. Speaking of Italian manufacturers, let's take a look at this root slip joint from MKM with olive wood handles. The cool thing about a lot of the Italian made luxury feeling knives is they're often even more affordable than you might expect, which is gonna be the case with this knife here as well. The olive wood is a very classic natural material from that part of the world and always lends things just a special vibe, a special feel in the hand. The steel here is M390, certainly not as exotic uh, as any of the stuff we've looked at so far, but could be amongst the highest performing steels of what we've seen here. Very excellent edge retention. Adding to the nice details are some contrasting color on the pivot collar there and a crowned spine, which we've seen a little bit of so far, but it just adds a, you know, a compliant feel in the hand, almost silky, warm, inviting. It's no sharp edges there for your, your hands to get caught on. This is just built to be a part of you, to be an extension of you in a way. Plus, it's also nicer to look at, I think, than a simple square spine could ever be. And this being a slip joint, they actually carry that crowned treatment all the way through the back spring, which integrates a lanyard hole here at the back. Just very, very sweet. And for carrying this knife around, they go one step further and give you this magnetic pocket sheath. It's leather, slips in quite nicely, as you can see, it holds securely, and magnet retention here for slipping into your pocket and holding it in place as you move. While that knife felt kind of subtly refined, this next knife from ADV is more about ostentatious presentation. Check out this Tonto Premium Flipper. Premium is the name of the model right here. And unlike a, you know, a reserved luxury car like a Mercedes or something like this, this is your Lamborghini. This is your supercar that is designed to shout, designed to be flashy, designed to get noticed. I dare you to uh, open this pocket knife and not turn a few heads, if you know what I mean. The blade is nearly four inches long with S35 VN steel. You've got compound grinds, this two-tone look to the blade, a bit on the thicker side. It is, again, made to catch some eyeballs. And the handle is certainly gonna do that as well. It's titanium. We've got this anodized kind of storm pattern going on, milling with texture added here and there, a little pop of accenting color provided as a result, very distinctive backspacer, milled pocket clip with a wheel on the end here, just like we saw on that CRKT earlier, although a little wider. This is more in keeping with the nature of this big knife Whereas that CRKT has kind of like a race wheel, this thing here is more of like a steamroller type of wheel on there. Definitely fits the vibe. And like the supercars I mentioned at the beginning, this knife is not just for show. It is built to go and go hard. All right, how about a fixed blade next? This is a Randall Model 2 letter opener. And 
Don't let the name fool you. Although a letter opener can be a true object of luxury, something just truly nice to elevate what you do day to day, this is a fully functioning knife. It's got a double-edged blade, nearly four inches long, but what are the practical purposes of this knife? I don't know that there is many, but as a desk knife, there's something that's really, really excellent about this. Don't get me wrong, you can certainly take this out and use it. It comes with an excellent sheath. It's built just like every other Randall out there, which is to say classic methods built extremely well, but you almost don't need this to do work to appreciate how beautiful and how excellent you're going to feel when you use it. I feel excellent just holding it, and I don't even own the thing. The handles themselves are a maroon linen micarta single piece and sculpted with utmost precision here. Like just a true understanding of how a knife or how a knife handle feels in your hand has been applied to this handle. Just it oozes quality and it oozes that feel of high end luxury when you pick it up. It truly does. This is one of those ones that's self-evident. I don't think I need to say anything more about this knife. It is just fantastic. So this next item is what you get when you blend a tactical item and a luxury good. Microtech pulls that trick off like no other brand I know with their out the front automatic knives like this Ultratech model right here. We've got a double-edged Damascus blade. We've got aluminum construction, proprietary hardware, and just a excellent action. When you go to flick that switch, it is ready to go. The sound, the feel in your hand as you operate it is exceptional. And although Microtech applies the same precision and attention to detail you get with this knife, with their larger tactical models like the Troodon line, or their more convenient, shall we say, models like the Exoset or the UTX series. It's the Ultratech, I think, that is the perfect embodiment of that just elevation of your life. Like, it is a luxury good. It really is. Yeah, it's still going to work. Yeah, it's still going to pull off what you need to do. But it exists simply to satisfy you, to make you happy. And I think it is the perfect encapsulation of that ethos. Now what Microtech is to the out the front automatic genre, Protech is to the button fired automatic, like this godson switchblade right here. Their stuff is built differently than Microtech's, but has that same quality of utmost precision and elevated engineering that we've come to expect and appreciate about them. This model right here stands a bit above the uh, base models with an aluminum bronze handle for a very excellent look. Has that kind of brass feel to it without the same style of tarnishing capability. It's got its own patina style going on though for sure. Mother of Pearl firing button right here. Just over a three inch blade, 154 cm in this case. And what I like about the Godson, it's something I've said about this model before. It takes inspiration from the classic Italian stiletto style switchblade. Has a very distinct action, but it takes that styling, takes those aesthetics and modernizes it, minimizes it, cleans it up and distills it down to like a pure bare essence of what that can be. You've got this angular handle, bit of flare here at the front instead of the ornate quillions. It just feels refined as a result. And that's something that is kind of an intangible and undefinable quality. What feels refined? Although it's hard to say, I kind of know it when I see it. I see it right here. So for the next thing, I wanted to include a Chris Reeve Sabenza on this list. And the only reason it is not here is simply because we didn't have any on the shelf the day we were filming this. But the reason being, a knife like the Sabenza has for decades now set new standards for precision and tight tolerances and true excellence in what you can achieve in a folding knife. There's a reason that today it is still a benchmark against which other knives are judged. But I do have one of the few knives on the market here today that I think can compete with the Sabenza, and that is this. The James brand is the brand, 
and the knife is called the Barnes. This knife possesses the same kind of cleanliness to its shape that you would find on something like the Sabenza, and that cleanliness is kind of a hallmark of the design language of the James brand. And it comes together in a knife here that is both elegant and also hardworking. The blade itself is M390, three and a half inches long, classic drop point shape, and it's the handle where it truly pulls ahead and sets itself apart. Integral, titanium, no openings here at the back, no fasteners between each side of the knife. It is a single piece of titanium milled out and made to support this hard working knife. You've got a frame lock, you've got a milled pocket clip here. That's a separate piece that is not milled out of the same piece as the handle itself. But to maintain that feel of it being just a solid billet, you can't even see any attachment screws from the outside. In fact, the only hardware you can see from the outside on the front is the pivot itself, the pivot on the back and the uh, lock bar interface shows some screws as well because that would be really hard to screw from the inside. But the pocket clip attaches with a single screw inside there, going up into the handle. So you never have to think about it, you never have to see it, it never gets in the way. And that single screw with this pocket clip slotted into a precisely milled channel is rock solid. And that's something that you see throughout the entire knife. It is truly exceptionally built. This next knife is also from the James brand. It's called the Wells. And this truly exemplifies the cleanliness of their design language. This wouldn't look out of place at all next to your MacBook or your iPhone. And this exhibits the same expert minimalism in its design language that made all those you know Apple computer products so famous, so iconic, and so sought after. This exemplifies that to a T. This is also actually a collaboration with the James brand and ProTech. I've already told you how good they are at building their automatic knives, and they have the same thing going on here with this manual button lock flipper. We've got aluminum construction, a MagnaCut blade steel, which is truly the most desirable blade steel on the market right now. The button lock action is superb. Check out that clean profile when the knife is closed as well. Very, very clean. They've even gone a step above and done something unique with the wire pocket clip right here. Wire pocket clips always maintain a nice minimalist aesthetic, but they've buried the leads inside the handle with a nice flush mounted plate to keep things subtle and to increase the retention without it becoming something that has too much texture that might tear up your pocket. If I lift the wire clip right there, you can see two small channels that the wire sits in to keep it from moving to side to side and also aiding in, like I said, a little bit more retention. And lastly, the action. Protect doesn't just know automatic action, they get their button lock flippers perfect as well. Last but not least, we've got a kitchen knife to truly up the luxury ante. This is a Mikkel Willemsen Custom. We've got a few of these here at the moment. They call it the Urban Tactical Santoku. And well, tactical might not quite be luxury. We did say Microtech kind of blended tactical and luxury together. So we'll let this slide as well. Whatever you want to call it, this is something that is truly amazing looking to behold. Seven and a half inch blade, Chad Nichols Damascus through and through. Excellent texture or excellent uh, contrast between the layers. And speaking of texture, the spine is fully worked front to back. This does do a couple of things. One, we talked about crowned spines earlier, kind of breaking up the, uh, the right angles that you might see on a typical spine. This does the same thing here, makes it a little more comfortable to hold. And it also adds a little more grip, actually. And if you're you know, using a kitchen knife as you should, you know, choking up here, doing things with the spine, that little extra texture can be pretty handy as you're going about your business. Carbon fiber is provided for the handles with copper pins, mimicking or actually fully carved with the same texture as the carbon fiber. Just a showpiece for sure, a centerpiece of any kitchen collection, and it's ready to do the work as well. All right, that's all we've got to look at today. 
This is the cool part about my job. Even if it's stuff that's beyond my price range, there is a lot of amazing stuff I get to look at here. And it's my pleasure to get to share some of it with you. Because if I weren't working here, I wouldn't be able to really experience and really appreciate what goes into a lot of these knives. So I'm hoping to share that as mentioned. If you want to get your hands on any of them though, check out the links in the description. They're going to take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our long running knife rewards program, especially on these higher priced items. You can earn a lot of money back towards a future knife each time you pick one up. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off, wishing everyone a happy holidays this time of year. See you next time.